Hey guys, it's a proud cat lover, and I haven't been making videos very often lately because I was planning on doing it, and then I ended up having some problems. So if you've watched my video in the past about how to make insect feed, and it had, you know, chicken feed and cat food and fish flakes in it with calcium, I would suggest changing that recipe up a bit, mainly because I ended up somehow, and I'm sure it's because of the store I got it from, getting grain or flour mites in the food. And it was an in, in an airtight container, so I wasn't expecting it to happen, because I got the same things outside, but I figured because I was storing the food outside, that's the only reason it happened. And so I was kind of surprised, so I've been dealing with that. They have paper towels in the bottom of their tanks now, because I had to take everything outside. I had to take all the stuff off this. I had to take that tank with the hissing cockroaches outside everything had to be cleaned with vinegar water I had to put all my insects in these containers while their containers are being cleaned because all of the food had the mites in it now the only worst part the only bad part was the bucket sitting here had them crawling all over the lamp that I had up here for this tank had them all over it because they were using it as a little highway to get to the tank itself they were climbing up the side and they were climbing in the tank and stuff, mainly because they were just looking for somewhere humid and warm to hide. So I feel bad, but I have been having to keep the tanks at like 40 to 50% humidity because I read that if it's under, some people say 80, some people say 65% humidity. So I'm keeping it under 60% humidity, which I feel bad, but they're doing okay so far. And if they go to shed or anything, then I do spray it in there. I've been keeping the temperatures at 70 degrees because I read that under 77 they don't thrive. So I've been keeping the entire house, which already isn't that hard anyway because my mom keeps the house pretty cool, but I've been having to keep my room at a cool temperature, which is hard for me because I'm used to keeping it nice and warm for all my reptiles and my bugs. So right now it's been, I think, let's see... It's been four day, three days. Today would be the fourth day, but it's been three days that uh, I've been dealing with it. The first day I spent the entire day cleaning stuff, and I was so stressed out and worried because I was like, what is going to happen? But then I got to reading. I did extensive research and found out that if it's under certain temperatures, under certain humidity, if you get rid of all the food source, if you take the mass-infected stuff outside, dump it or whatever which I did at 2 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. I was laying in bed and I heard a noise that was from my gecko, so I was turning around to look at them, and I see my lamp, which was sitting on the floor right next to the bucket, had all these little white particles of dust on it, so I'm like, uh, is that normal? And so I looked at it with my flashlight and I almost just passed out of horror because they were all over. They were all over the extension cord because they were using it as a little highway. They were all over the lamp. They were over the trash can here, which I cleaned. They were over the bucket. It was so scary. So at 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm taking everything outside that is heavily covered. And I was like, you know what? It is 2 in the morning. I can't start cleaning now. I'm so tired. So the next morning, it was full on clean. People said use bleach or you can use vinegar water. I would rather use vinegar. Safer for my reptiles and my cats. So I did the vinegar. I probably made it a little bit heavier than one part vinegar to two parts water just because I wanted to make sure they died. Some people use Clorox cleaning wipes to wipe down surfaces, so I might try that if I end up having any more problems. So far, I've only been seeing one or two, so I think I'm doing pretty good at keeping it down. The rest of the house is about 30 to 40 percent humidity because it's not very humid in our house at all, and um, our basement is 68 degrees. Our kitchen sometimes gets to around 75, but that's only when my mom is cooking, and most of the time is around 72. So I only have to really worry about my room. So all the insects are going to have to be switched over to vegetable diet only, and I don't think I'll be going back over to having any grains in my house after this, because my parents have a lot of food in the kitchen, and that was my worst horror, is are these bugs going to make it to the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> so, I would have felt totally awful, I mean, because that's a lot of money that we have in our kitchen. So, yeah, if you guys have any types of food that you're feeding your crickets, it's, make sure to store it in the refrigerator or the freezer. 
and only keep it for about three or four days in the container before you toss it and toss it outside. If you're going to feed grains, freezers, if you keep it in the freezer, it won't deplete any of the nutrients of the food and it will kill off any eggs or larvae. So that's another thing you can do. Or if you keep it in the refrigerator, that should also kill them off if it's under... Oh, I can't remember if it was... Well, actually, I think a freezer because it said it has to be zero degrees Fahrenheit. So I think it said like 13 Celsius or something. I don't know Celsius, so don't quote me on that. But yeah, so... It's extremely important to keep an eye on all of your food because I've read people are saying that sometimes they get rice or they get flour at some grocery stores that have bulk food um, and they bring it in and they don't store it in the refrigerator or the freezer and they get flour mites. And so, yeah, be extremely careful, guys, because these are something you don't want to have to deal with. At least I took care of it right away when I saw it. Females can lay between five to 800 eggs in their lifetime, which they live for about a month. So by lowering the temperatures and the humidity, I can stop it right away. But I still don't want to have to worry about them ever coming back. So I'm not going to be feeding grain anymore. And I have moist cat food and I have some dry cat food. And I might just stay with moist after I feed off all my dry cat food. Because I don't even want to risk getting it in the cat food. Oh, it was such a pain. It's not even worth it. So anyway, guys, that's the main reason. That's the biggest update. <laughs> Um, so, back to some better news. Um, some of my caterpillars have pupated into their chrysalis. One of them is right here. You can't really see it good, so let me get a flashlight real quick. So, I know I've showed you this one already. I'm pretty sure. I don't remember if I have or not, but there's one right there. And then we have a new one up here. And it's interesting, because that one's green. And this one and this one over here are brown. As you can see here that there's a brown one and then we have one right here that's getting ready to go into its chrysalis as well and we have about five caterpillars left before they'll all be in their chrysalis and then the praying mantis in here is doing good you can see jewels right here and I'm gonna be getting her some food today and then of course the hissing cockroaches also have the paper towel for now they're being kept under the same conditions. Their tank is around 40% humidity. Sometimes I put it up to 50, but even though they don't have any stuff in here, I don't want the insects to be attracted to humidity, even though I'm keeping my room cool, because I don't want to have to go through all that again of cleaning the tanks. But I do feel bad because I try to keep it hot in here most of the time because they do prefer like 77 degrees. Um, so it's really killing me. <laughs> that I can't provide the proper care for my animals when it comes to temperature and humidity because of these bugs. But I have to put them through this because I have to get rid of the bugs. So anyway, let this be a lesson to everyone who does grain feeding. Be extremely cautious, be careful. Put your food in the freezer right away when you get it. Put it in small little baggies so that you can use a small amount at a time. Throw it out after three or four days. Replace it with that amount be extremely careful because I'd hate for this to happen to anyone that is subscribed to me or anyone out there, period, because it was horrible. At least it wasn't in the food that we eat because apparently some people are allergic to these and they can have really bad health issues to where it sends them to the hospital if they eat them or if it gets on their skin, it can cause a rash or something. Um, a lot of people said, though, that you probably sometime in your life have eaten some of these just because they're so tiny. They literally look like a speck of dust. Like, there's a little piece of dust right here. That's about how big they are. I don't think that's one. Let me see. No, it's not. I'll rub it anyway, just in case. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's how big they are. They're really tiny. So I know this video is super long, but I just don't want to have anybody ever have to go through what I've went through. I cannot stress it enough to be extremely cautious when it comes to keeping any food, even cat or dog food, inside. Like, have a really airtight container or a really thick container keep the food in the freezer for three to four days before you stick it in after you buy it just be extremely careful <laughs> so anyway guys thanks for watching my really long video uh, and have a good day